If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 25 minutes... We get into some fun conversations. Adam, Justin, and myself... Always fun! <laughs> ...get to <laughs> Never talk boring. and bullshit that. a little bit. Yeah. I know. Uh, well, first, we talk about The Punisher. This is a great series on Netflix. Justin turned us on I to love it. love it! We yeah. talk about Ozark, another great one. Black Mirror, new season's coming out. That uh, creeped me out, the first one. It actually affected me for like two days afterwards. <laughs> uh, we talk about Justin's personal EMP... <laughs> For, it's a good idea for robot dogs. I mean, somebody's out there building Find it. out what that is. You're going to have yeah. to listen to the episode to find out what I'm talking sure. about. We talk about our Chico trip. Oh, we went north. And we talk about why Doug's so angry because his overweight neighbors are having loud <laughs> sex. They're smashing it. At 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about the New Year's fitness rush, the movie Wonder, and my money back guarantee with that movie. Uh, that only applies to you Adam and Justin. You'll cry with <laughs> snot bubbles, apparently. I promise you'll cry. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, and then we opened up our Thrive Market box. We got some cashews. All and kinds of goodies. Coconut cereal and some coconut oil for Justin's ashy knees. We have a lot of <laughs> I need products it. in there we talk about. Also, by the way, we have a discount uh, set up with Thrive Market for our listeners. All you got to do is go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump. And this is what you're going to get one month for free. You'll get $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and you'll get free shipping. We also, in our show notes, have links to all the products that we talk about in this episode. And then we get into the questions. The first question was, are the mobility sessions in MAPS performance meant to be tough, or is this person just a massive wimp? Wow. They're a wimp. The next question <laughs> was, uh, can we talk about the difference between being anabolic versus being catabolic what are those two That's right listen to this question find out if we helped you out or we just made you more confused exactly uh the next question was uh why are so many big box gym front desk staff visibly not fit apparently Rotund. this person is annoyed that they walk into the gym and they're not attracted to the first person that they see right away mm. uh we i feel have, you though we have some stories about that um adam talks about hot girls at the front desk again the last question was, Justin actually gets an opportunity, and I say it's an opportunity because he loves doing this. It's do. his favorite thing to do. This makes it's, me it's happy. It's the first question I've ever seen he did homework on. Oh, he gets so... I've never seen him take notes <laughs> before. <first> one. <laughs> he actually... Uh, I had to really put some effort into this one. He actually connects each one of the Mind Pump staff to a character in Star Wars... Uh, here's a, a clue. He thinks he's Han Solo. <laughs> no shit. That should uh, say everything. Also, uh, so one of the best things that we have here at Mind Pump is our private forum. It is a wonderful group of fitness enthusiasts, people interested in fitness, people who are interested in comedy. There's a lot of funny memes that go on there, people asking questions, posting their workouts, posting their diets. It's a fantastic resource this month is the last time you will ever get to enroll in that forum for one price for life. So right now, you can for $97, you get access to it forever. You never have to pay that again. After this month, if you enroll in the forum, you'll have to pay $97 every year. So it'll be an annual fee. So right now, you can get in there, pay once, you're in there for life. Also, if you get in our forum right now, you'll get an offer, an immediate offer, to get 50% off, uh, uh, excuse me, if you enroll in any MAPS program, you'll get 50% off the forum. So if you're interested in one of our programs for fitness, like MAPS Anabolic, which is great for strength uh, and muscle building, or MAPS Performance for athletic performance, or MAPS Aesthetic for you know your, your cosmetic-minded individuals or stage presentation individuals, or Prime or Prime Pro for um, you know correctional purposes, if you enroll in any of those programs or, or even in a bundle, you'll get an immediate offer for 50% off for the forum as well. And again, if you do with the forum now, you'll pay once and you'll be in there for life. If you have any questions on any of our programs, just go to mindpumpmedia.com. It goes a one. I started Punisher two, last night. Three. Two, you started one. watching Punisher? Yeah, I did. Was it good? Boom. It is good. Wait, it gets better. Ozark is more my show though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, you know what? That's a little too slow for me. See, yeah, I could, you're definitely like you're definitely like the guy who loves like all of the X Men movies, like, just action, like great. Yeah. I'll trade. I'll trade good plot drama or like twist for action. Like I. Yeah, I don't me know. too. 
Mm. So, but it's good. Though. I like my mind it's to be good. It's fucked. definitely. It's definitely. It's got good writing though. Give it, it a is. chance. It's it's well written and it's. Got, I do like the character. I do like. I like it. I guess like what's it. coming out mm. soon? What, what, what? Black Mirror, another season. Oh, oh. I did see that. Ooh. I saw that. Dude, you watch the trailer? I haven't. Wa- I haven't even watched That'll all the good. episodes. They watch. So there was one of the one of the trailers. Yeah, I haven't got through all the old ones. One of the yet. trailers shows this robot attack dog that I think goes crazy, <laughs> and people are trying to get away from it. Uh huh. <laughs> there's like a view there's like one clip where she's that, looking off far into the distance and you just see this thing traveling at an ungodly speed down the no. hill and I'm just like that's terrifying what? yes dude <laughs> so the, the movie that I told you guys the second Kingsman that's, she has robot dogs that like protect her and they're oh, like no is this gonna be a thing yeah oh, fuck it makes kind of sense, actually. You know, we probably—I I like mean, regular dogs. Yeah, like, they're they're not, nice. It's not like yeah, warm. Make them crazy, and you can kill them if you need to. <laughs> not <laughs> saying you would. What the oh fuck God, is dude. wrong? If your dog went crazy and tried to attack you, like if it's a robot dog, what are you gonna do? That's true. I mean, you're, you're fucked. You shut it out. Pull you got the like plug. a little EMP in your pocket, right? and you pull the battery. Just out. Just drop the EMP in there. Just drop the EMP. Too bro. much. You've been watching. Where do you get an EMP, Matrix. Justin? I mean, we'll make them by then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right. I mean, we'll have like yeah. personal Radio Shack. EMPs. Radio Shack has that or no? Yeah. I'll just have it. It's like the new Taser. Yeah. You know, you just just, <laughs> just drop it off, and then all electrical shit dies. Fry the whole neighborhood so everybody. Yeah. Can, you know. Yeah, you're that asshole that just. Hey, was that your guys' first time in Chico? No. Yeah, it was. That was your turn. Your first time, but not Justin's. You'd no, par- you'd party up there. No, my, my grandma lives close by up there, but yeah, I've I've partied up there. So before. we we went up there to whole lot of nothing up there on the way up there. There huh? wasn't nothing. We yeah, went up there to hang out with the Farmsville with the girls from Cauliflower Foods. We did some like cooking videos with them. Yeah, and uh, Chico's. I've never been there. It's a lot of college kids. I saw a lot of college kids when we went to the restaurant. It's very yeah. college college feel. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of flannel. Lo- yeah, yeah, man. I was Jeez. like, hey, just, my people. I felt so out of place. Oh, <laughs> I felt man. so out of place. Justin fit right in. I yeah. was like, hey. Yeah. And then we got carded. What? Yeah, that was funny. That was, she's trying to get a tip. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> yes. Why? It's, it's, an, it's annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Either, so either you're trying. Gray hair, dude. Let's, uh, let's move on. Yeah, either you're trying to get a tip or you're stupid. Because there's, <laughs> there's no way I could be mistaken for somebody like, under the age of like, 21. Come on. Yeah, there's no way. 25, maybe. Who are we kidding here? Yeah, maybe, under 21, yeah, no way. Maybe on my best day, Not my, even hair, cl- my hair died. <laughs> I'm wearing a ball cap. Dude, when wearing I look, skinny jeans. When, maybe then I can pull off 27, when I look, when maybe I look 25. My, when I look 21. my best. Yeah. You know, it's like your voice was all different. Like yeah. your skin was all shiny. Yeah, that was like your obvious like, trying I am to, not fucking 21. Your liver was you healthy. Yeah. Yeah, when I was, when I met my Teeth best, when I'm at my absolute best, that look my age so there's no way that i could look yeah. At 21 <laughs> yeah at that point dude this morning was uh but oh good good time out there with the cauliflower foods girl by the way so we want to say thank you ladies yes yeah, thanks yeah. for hosting us yeah. yeah that was really was nice they took fun. us out too good food god that that brewery right the, it was reminds me of or, uh, orchard city kitchen over here in san jose mm-hmm. where it's like farm to plate Mm-hmm. Oh man, it was just very fresh feel to it. Dude, it was really good. They what had it, these pretzels that, that cheese with cheese. Was amazing. Oh god, the pretzels. what was it called? It was like some missile cheese or something. I don't know. Some man. torpedo cheese. I don't know. It was aggressive. It was something but German. Was I think. I think yeah. it was a German name. I don't think it was missile. Yeah. Well, it was like I think it was. You, it was like a spread. It was like a spread cheese. And mm-hmm. they, yeah, it was I feel like delicious. I feel like we're drinking a lot more. Yeah, it's just alcohol. Happening. Yeah, we never people, used to drink this. What happens when we go out to dinner and you know? I had a people. little bit. I didn't have a bunch. No, I had I had a beer. You had a big beer. Yeah, it, it was a tall one. Yeah, did you, you get the tipsy? I did have a little bit because I had some of those flights too. So I had I had probably mm-hmm. three of those little flights, and then I had a beer, and that's en- that's enough to give me a nice little a nice little buzz. You know, you get flirty when you drink. Do yeah. I? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you you hit bit. me in the ass twice. Whoa! And you hit Justin in the ass. Yeah, I think twice I too. That. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, why are you flirting with? And, and then Justin's like, he's drinking. He's like, it's like, oh, <laughs> don't give him any more. That's what he does. This is, we don't <laughs> want to go any further. <laughs> Yeah, dude, this morning was hilarious. So I come in early because I'm on a. I did an interview with Chris Kresser, who's a great guy, by the way. Yeah, uh, functional medicine guru. And what, what's the name of his podcast? Shout out to his podcast. Uh, good question. I think Doug's gonna pull that up right now because I can't remember. See, this is what happens with the, you guys talk about me having a good memory. It's not. It's select. It's not. It's selective. I it's can't in one choose. direction. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, you also focus on the things you need to focus on too, yeah. which is the content you provide on the podcast. Somebody just yeah. sent me a thing to. to interview on their podcast and they wanted me to fill out all this information and so I get on there and I'm like half the information I don't know. 
like, yeah. what's our Skype mm-hmm. and all this stuff. I'm like, fuck, this is no. somebody else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his, his podcast like, oh, is no. <laughs> Revolution Health Radio. Okay. Oh, he's he's right. somebody he's somebody I found initially when I got into started learning about wellness because he had the articles online and stuff and he was talking about yeah. all the things that I like to talk about now. So he's like one of my favorite people. He's but a wealth it, of knowledge. So I'm getting in here. I'm on. I'm supposed to be on at nine o'clock, right? And I can't do the podcast without Doug, who's the producer, because I have no idea. All these buttons and shit to switch. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to sit here and talk. So I'm waiting, and it's like 8.55, right? I need to be on at 9. You're so I'm sweating. Yeah, I'm texting Doug. Yeah. Like, Doug, what's going on, man? <laughs> like, no! So Dun- Doug walks in, pissed. He's angry. Oh, my God. Yes! Yeah. You're just telling me a little bit about Dude, this. Describe everything that He happened. walks in, and he's angry. He's like, fucking neighbors. I'm like, what? <laughs> fucking keep me up all night. God damn it. Fucking blah. And he's pissed and he's cussing like crazy. And I've known Doug long enough to know when he starts like to get mad. Shit went yeah, down. Don't fuck with the angry chimp. No, no, no. You calm him down. <laughs> yeah. Because if I if I start talking shit about his neighbors too. Massage his back yeah, a little bit. It'll elevate him and then yeah. it's just he gets he gets crazy. So I'm like, I'm calming him down. I'm rubbing his tummy. Like, hey, it's okay, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's getting real mad. So hey, the human garage. So guy he did said to me. Yeah. He said his neighbors, I guess. They're they just fucking don't. I guess they don't go to sleep or whatever. Or they, maybe they'd sleep at in the daytime. But he's like, they woke me up at one. They woke me up at three. Loud ass TV, TV having sex right next to me, super loud. <laughs> Damn. He's like, and, and they only did it for like thirty seconds, but it kept me awake. It's <laughs> so critical of the performance. He's, he's making this. He's impressive. Yeah. He's making the sounds. Yeah. That like a herd of elephants. He's hella angry. He's yeah. like, I couldn't even jerk off to that. It was yeah. so short. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's telling me the sounds like <laughs> <laughs> he's super mad. <laughs> So I don't know. What was that last part? Yeah. So anyway, uh, you made it though, right? You made it. We made it. We got on the podcast. But if you're, if the neighbors are listening, my warning to you. I guarantee they don't listen to this show. (laughs) (laughs) They are the most unhealthy looking people I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, I feel like I. I was telling you guys this on the drive, right? I think that a lot of people. Uh, if you're if they're not working out, I think they don't listen to us. You think so? Yeah, I think it's like you like feel, feel guilty. Yeah, like you feel guilty. Yeah, I think that I think it's like that. At least, like, that yeah, I, yeah, I know. I've been told that by some people. Like, I'll run into somebody who considers themselves like an MP fan or listener, and and they go and I go, oh, have you listened to, like the recent? I'll drop recent episodes. Oh, did you listen to drama? Brendan Shaw? Did you listen? And they're like, oh no, no, I'm, I haven't listened in a couple months. I've been so busy at work and I haven't been working out. And it's like, oh, okay, I get this. This is like when you're working out, you're listening yeah. to mind pumping. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not working out, you feel fucking guilty. Damn it. I Man. Know. <laughs> no, you know, this is when you're supposed to be listening to us. It, it makes, you're not working out. It makes me wonder because <clears throat> does that mean that uh, our podcast will follow the fitness trend, like the fitness, uh, you know, the yearly fitness cycle? I think, tip- I think typically it hmm. would, except for we are – I mean, we have every intention to break out of that, right? Like we, that was hard. That was part of the LA trip of going down and doing drama, Brennan Shaw. Yeah, Lewis people House. who aren't in fitness. Right. So I think that, I mean, I think we will, we will, we would get trapped in that if we, if our message was forever around just yeah, we're trying to break only out. health and fitness. Yeah. Cause we've seen that it, it does resemble a lot of what we saw, you know, with 24 hour fitness and like the cycles people go through. Uh, you yeah. Know, this is like hell, hell months right yeah. now, dude. Hell months in the health and fitness business. Like if you're, if you're in health and bi- uh, health and fitness in any in any any uh, aspect, right? I think right now is the most challenging time. It is so to drum up business. It is so weird that it is so predictable. Mm-hmm. It's so predictable. Here's what happens. Dude, it's human psychology, man. Like November, December suck donkey dick in fitness. Like nobody comes in to work out, especially December. It's just dead. And that's ugly to watch. It's it sucks, especially if you run a gym or you're you know you're trying to produce sales or whatever. You're just just tanking. Mm. And then January, and it's not even January 1st, because when I remember when I first got into fitness, everybody talked about January. The first week of January is basically extension of December. It's still kind of, and people start to trickle in. And then the second week of January, it's like the gates of hell just, and it's, remember that scene in Ghostbusters when they break the, like the, the, the guy opens the gate to the freaking containment thing and all the ghosts fly. That's what it's like. It's like the doors open your gym. Okay. And all I'll of a sudden. It's more like Black Friday, yeah, you know, like, and everybody's smashing through the windows. And, ah, oh, trying, dude. And then grab like, like what's the special toy. Do you guys have any stories of like the busiest, some of the busiest days you can remember 
running gyms? Well, I remember, I remember, uh, dude, lines for the yes, treadmill. Yes, the lines for the mm-hmm. treadmills and having to police that and having signups for that. Like, that like, was go like run a, around the building. Like, I remember having what to, fuck you doing? I remember <laughs> having to kick people off treadmills and what a shitty job that was. You remember like, just going up and hitting stop? <laughs> you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> I did. been taking too long. You just, <laughs> nope. Oh, done. dude, I had to do that. Oh, my God. I feel like I've done that. I yeah. had to do that. I'd have to walk around. I have, and I'd just I would do stop. it if I asked That's somebody, awesome. like, after like the third time, I'm like, listen, hey, I need you to wrap it up here. You got somebody you have two people that are waiting behind yeah. you and stuff like that just be courteous to everybody else maybe go do a different piece of equipment right and uh, i've come back a second time and then the third time all right fucking plugs getting pulled dude, dude it got so <laughs> bad it got so bad that the gym would have a 20 minute time limit on all cardio i don't so think you, you could do that shit you anymore. have to make that announcement several yeah. times throughout the evening you know 20 minute time attention all members and guests 20 minute time limit yeah and then which is such a silly rule dude it's stupid it's such a stupid and, rule it's and, like there's no and I remember we tried to put like a spin on it. Yeah, too. I was just gonna say. Yeah, like, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do remember. You remember we, we would sell it. Yeah, we would like, yeah. like, well, when you go beyond twenty minutes, you're no longer burning <laughs> body right. fat. Yeah. yeah, you've crossed over yeah, the other zone. Yeah. You're, you're burning muscle, yeah. so <laughs> that's why you don't want to go over twenty yeah. minutes. You gotta stay in that one zone. Not because we're trying to cram more people in here. That's yeah. not why. Yeah. <laughs> not, that's that's not, not, totally not. Nothing why. to do it's with that. Because we want you to have better results. <laughs> I would give tours of the gym, and I'll never forget, dude. I people would come in and. They and I give them a tour, and I'd have to walk. You know, when you're walking through a nightclub and you got to walk sideways to like squeeze around people uh, and shit. Do that shimmy. There would be segments of the gym where yeah. I, I'm doing that and I'd lose my guest. I'd have to wait because they have to make it through the crowd. <laughs> like I'm at a club. They're like looking like dude, over. Come, like, come January 1, dude, Zumba. Fucking 400 oh, people. Yeah. On there. <laughs> <Just Yeah. laughs> 400 people. You know why? It's the one class you could do the first day. It's so easy you to just get up and go, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. The more I you can f- move my hips. Yeah, the more you move your hips and yeah. flail your arms, like you, the more you move look like you know what like you're this. doing. Yeah. Did you guys ever have lines in the bathroom, showers? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Lying in the showers is always funny because you right. see people just, dudes just staying there naked. Yeah, waiting. With yeah. their towels. Staring at other dudes chilling. naked. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, listen, like, yeah. double up. Both you guys use the shower heads together. <laughs> double it's up. faster. Yeah. Double up. It's yeah. faster that way. Uh, I wash so, you, you wash me. Yeah, yeah and it's, uh, but it's a, it's a crazy season. And then it, how long does that rush last usually? Three months. It's March, like, after the end of March, so April 1st, it really starts to dip. Now, did you guys find that February was... More for personal training. Yeah. Yes. Like February was February massive. was like huge well, I for used my to, business. I used to say that the it takes two weeks before the real traffic hits in January because yep. everyone's still hung over from New Year's yep. and like yeah. most people are like, I'll get there. I'll get yeah. there. One week goes by, then they're like, okay, I got to get there. So mm-hmm. it's the like... Selling the membership, that's huge for yeah. January 1. Yeah, the back half of January, February, and March was always probably one of the biggest months I've ever been. Been a yeah, part. like more like then like the momentum's from the January is kicking in, and all the tr- people have trained a few times with trainers, so now they're up for recessions. Like I mean, it's it got to a point where I would go through the cycle enough times to where January starts to come around, and I'd remember feeling like, okay, here we go, mm-hmm. thirty days of no no taking days off, straight like grinding, yeah, bell to bell. Like I remember, I loved it though, dude. I'm not gonna lie. I you know there was a, point, a lot more energy. I relished in that. Dude. There was a I'm point. There was a point up. though where I was like, okay, like this is it's the same thing. You know what I mean? You get kind of sick of the whole. Mm. Because in December, here's what I would do in December. Everybody's taking time off. I was working hard in December because it was so slow. So was I. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm fresh, ready for January. It's like I'm tired from December. Yeah. And now January's coming. Well, I told you guys that it's it's in my career, November was always, so my birthday month, I said, it's always happened this way. And a lot of that is just because I'm a workaholic at that time. I, mm-hmm. I know that I was going to buy something for myself for my birthday because that's what I do, all right? So I used to get myself something really <laughs> nice every year. And I would like work my ass off to whatever that was going to be. So I I would just grow. And I also looked at it like this is when most people are letting off the That's throttle. That's what I always picked up on is like when everybody's slacking is when I would like rev it up even harder. Because right. you knew that like you're going to get all the business. Right. Because yeah. they're, they're fucking slacking yeah, off. Yeah, everyone's going on, ch- taking trips and yeah. holiday they're stuff. They're not taking the walk-ins. Yeah. They're not doing all that yeah. stuff. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's already in holiday mode Checking where they're out. just they're not really, really ready to work. Mm-hmm. And the business slowing down. So there's already that excuse for it. Like, oh, it's mm-hmm. November. Oh, it's yeah. December. Mm-hmm. You know. Crazy. Did I tell you guys about the movie Wonder? Yes. Oh, yes, you did. Dude. Too sad, bro. Looks oh, hella sad. Listen to me right now, and I pro- I'll give you your money back. <laughs> I'll give you your money back if you don't agree. Go watch Wonder. If it's not one of the best movies you've ever seen, I'll refund you. I'm not talking on the podcast to you guys, by the way. I'm not I refunding you. I like, see it in the comfort <laughs> of my yeah, house, though. You know what I mean? I'll do it with I'm you guys. I'm going to wail like a little kid. F- you know? Dude, no joke, 30 seconds in. 
right away, 30 seconds in, you're already like, mm, no, no, no. my do my girlfriend on my right, my yeah. my mom on my left, and they took turns not crying, sobbing. Oh man, it wasn't like a normal like oh See, you know, some tears are coming down. It was that's <laughs> not my kind of party. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but it's it's I not avoid that like the plague. It's not crying because give me anything to compare it to because I was asking you. I'm like, what is, is it? Okay, so like Forrest Gump. Yes. Yes, I was just going to say that. Remember how Forrest Gump would make you want to cry because it was so yeah. good just yeah. powerful. and touching? Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, okay. but probably more so, especially for you, Justin, because you're a parent. Son of a bitch. And you'll identify with the parents and what they have to go through. Yeah. But it's a good, it's a feel good cry. It's not like a terrible. Like, it's just that's what Forrest Gump reminded me of. Yeah, it's not yeah. like Schindler's he, List. He, he like, when yeah, I watched yeah, Schindler's yeah, yeah. List, I cried and then I felt terrible for a week after. And <laughs> I was like, it was fuck like that a movie. tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. wonder I watched it and I felt like I was a better human afterwards. I felt literally like, I'm going to be a better person. Right, okay. not, yeah, I'll definitely. You're selling me on it now. And if, in my own house. And the message that we share on the show, mm -hmm. it's very. Very much so. You see it in this movie. Oh, really? Yes, dude. Okay, you got me interested. Now. Yes, very, very much so. Right, we'll go see mm. it. What is? Uh, oh, today's Wednesday, huh? Yeah. So say Tuesday, you get the uh, the the deal over at uh, Oak Ridge. No, don't go to Oak Ridge. You know where you need to go? Where? Almaden uh, Cinelux next to the Twenty Four Fitness in Willow Glen. Yeah. It's cheaper. It's cheaper, and if you buy tickets on your on uh, Fandango or whatever, you can pick your seats ahead of time, so you don't have to show up early. You just pick your seats yeah. and go. Okay. That's where I go, dude. And it's hey, cheaper. Fandango, hit us up. Man. It's not as nice. Like, you know? the seats aren't... I'm always using They're not Fandango. bad or anything. Yeah. They're not as nice. But the, the screen is good. The sound is good. Everything's good. Okay. Popcorn's yeah, not that's bad. that's the way to go. <laughs> Popcorn's not Get bad. Get your seat way ahead of time. But, dude, I walk... I, you know what we do? We sneak cheeseburgers in Katrina's purse. That's what we do. <laughs> She brings her big purse, and we get. Uh, that's why I like going to the mall because I wait get, a minute. She I get buck. You're not joking. You actually sneak a cheeseburger. She have, bro. We go to. This she's is got literally a big purse. This is li yeah, she's one of those big Louis purses. You uh, know what I'm saying? Yeah. That is all hella big, so you can fit like a kid in there. So we. <laughs> and hey, then, that's another one. You can you can dude, save some, serious money. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. So we, kids. one of my kids. So I'll our, get my three year old. So in there. our go to is we'll call we'll call Buckhorn Grill at the mall because it's at the, in the mall in the food court. But I love Buckhorn Grill. Anyone's had it before? Like you can get tri tip, all kinds of great stuff. But I love their. California good. burger, and uh, Katrina and I will both get a couple burgers, and she'll put them in her purse, and then we'll go, we'll go in, and then we'll eat our eat a hell of good burger watching movie. Otherwise, you know why? The smell of the popcorn always gets me, and then I get full on popcorn, and I always it's so good going it's, it's down, empty inside, and it ruins me later on. My I'm stomach is always up because I'll crush a whole box of that shit. The popcorn, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what else? And then I feel like I'm not shit after. Either. Then I shit feel like shit afterwards. So you're that jerk in the movie theater that just fills the theater with smells. Yeah. <laughs> you know totally. what I'm saying? Yeah. I the day that they started selling hot dogs in all the freaking condiments. Oh, I give a hot dog smells. Weird. I hate that. Especially if people put rail a good, and sour a good on Cali it. Hey, oh, a good California asshole. buckhorn grill. Is, people should be going like, oh, that smells. It's good. not. A, it's not that. Yeah. It's, a, it's not it's that. Like it's fucking a, boiled hot dog. Savory boiled hot dog yeah. smells like. Hold shit. on a second. <laughs> it's it's not that the smell is bad. It's that it doesn't match the scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if I brought like right. Let, let me put it this way. I don't uh, think it's strong enough to out out outpower the forty things of fucking popcorn like behind me. Yeah. Let me give you it's a like good, let me give you a good example. You yeah. go to the to over here, Scrambles, the breakfast place next door, right? You right. go over there and you smell Bacon and eggs. You, you smell eggs. Not a problem. Now you're at the doctor's office. Somebody's eating scrambled eggs right next to you. Fucking it stinks. Yeah. It doesn't match. And somebody's complaining about their infection. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, oh, eggs? What the eggs fuck? Eggs and infection? Yeah. This yeah. doesn't mix. It's gross. So it just doesn't match to smell hot dogs <laughs> and burgers. <laughs> and <laughs> I just got my boil removed. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, God. I don't want to smell. Food like yeah. other kinds. Popcorn makes sense, yeah. but not like you know pizza and, and all these other foods. Unpack that. How funny is that? It's uh, true, right? Yeah. Unpack that. That's really funny to me. You know that you that we even think that way, right? It's like this doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. make sense. It doesn't smell right. So, for a movie. It's a bad combo. So I was teasing. My, I'm trying to change that, man. So I was yeah. teasing my kids the other day, and it's just, uh, we were in the car. I don't remember what I ate, but um, you know, here's one of the things for those of you listening who don't have kids yet. You, those of you guys out there that don't have kids. There's a few things that you get to do when you're a dad. Mm. Dad jokes. Yep. Fucking amazing. All that that alone makes it worth it. <laughs> yeah. And fart. Yes. Farting in front of your kids. They and love it. Not that they love it or hate it. You yeah. love it. I think it's the funniest thing in the world. So yeah. we're in the car. My kids love it. We're in the car. We're driving. I do not know what I ate. We're all joking around. I hit the child lock on the windows <laughs> and, I, and I drop ass, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's bad. It's like, a, uh, it's one yeah. of the, it reminds, it's like old school, <laughs> it's an old school protein fart. You know uh, what I'm yeah. saying? 
where it smells like hey, bro you dropped one of those like outside the cauliflower it's, house it's, it's, <laughs> I, was like, I think i did that outside i did so i kill it in the, i kill it in the car and my kids are screaming and oh man that door and my, my daughter's threatening to roll out jump out the car while we're driving <laughs> <laughs> and my, she was like hugging the window she, ah! and my my son is like he's laughing and then he's not yeah. even tripping he's just sitting there yeah. and i'm just like you don't i'm like it doesn't bother you like I'm looking at him, like it he's trying to be a badass, right? Like yeah. it doesn't bother. Yeah. He's like, no. He's like, it just smells like eggs. He goes, I just picture that it's real eggs that I'm smelling. Gross. I'm like, brilliant. <laughs> no, no, dude. I'm like, bro. <laughs> no, Such a smart that kid. Can't it's do it. true. Like yeah. if it was like a boiled you egg, change it. Yes. Yeah, you know, if I had a boiled egg and I'm waving it in front of you and you smell it, it wouldn't be as bad as if like, oh, it's Adam's fart. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> smart kid. Yeah, you could go in the direction of like you know the uh, like you know have you ever been to like a volcano or like where it's real sulfury? Yeah. 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 It's like, you go with one of those. Yeah, but yeah. it's just... It uh, just smells like a really powerful It's fart. just one of those signals and signs that I'm getting from my kids that I'm doing a good job. Mm, I see. You know? I'm raising them right. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can Let's see that. Up. What do we got, Doug? Oh, we're doing an opening What's boxing. What's the bird? Yeah, is the bird the word? market box. Oh, yeah. oh I yeah. love this segment. Here we go. Let me tell you something right da, now. Da, 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 this, da. Okay, there's, there's been a handful of things that we've done in this business where we've like uh, all we've agreed. congratulated ourselves a lot for this, this. But yeah, but this is one of my favorites. Whose yeah. idea was this anyway? Who gets the credit? <laughs> it's, it's was it you, Adam, was it you, Adam? Yeah. Good job, brother. I know. It's Good job. If nobody was going to claim it, it was going to be you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, That's I mean, it. he does that. Right technically, too. I told him about it, and then he said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the inception. All right, what do we? What, head. what do we got, Douglas? Okay, today's box is entirely made up of Thrive Market brand items. Oh. Okay, so no, none of the other brands, just the Thrive Market brand. So we have here, we have Thrive Market coconut oil. Oh, who's that going to? Uh, well, so, you know, J- for anybody who wants to dump it in their coffee oil. here, I'm all about like more fat. I think Thank Justin you. should she should rub that on your on, yeah. your, on your knees. <laughs> we should all vote rub it all over my chest. <laughs> That'll, my wife good, will love it. It's a good moisturizer. Yeah, I'll be like all Thrive shiny. Market black peppercorns to go with our Himalayan salt. Oh, there you Ooh, go. That sounds good. There you go. By the way, uh, black pepper That's a combo right there increases the assimilation and absorption of certain nutrients. You'll notice in supplements many times they'll have. Black pepper as an oh, ingredient. Bioparin. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We got some coconut flakes. Thought we'd try these out. Oh, it's a cereal. It's yeah, it's paleo friendly. There's no grains in it. I have kids, I'll take oh, it. Wow, yeah. yeah well, I want to try it. So let's go to the box and taste it. Then you can we take it. it. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. My yeah. Bad. yeah, yeah, we All get right. it. All right. Grab that, Justin. I want it. Yeah. Behind you. Oh yeah. All right. So let's do this. To keep our place clean, you know, Thrive Market has cleaning products. Oh, there we go. Oh. So we have some all-purpose cleaner. All that- them guests to be putting their grubby fingers on our fucking clear window over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to try this out and see how clean we can get this place. You know what? Uh, I didn't know that they sold cleaning supplies. That's great. Oh, they sell a lot of do they sell oh, dude, Do they yeah. sell detergent, like laundry detergent? You know, I don't know. It's like, all natural, too, right? Like it's all do. natural. Did yeah. you know you know some of the residues and shit that are like certain detergents and softeners leave on your clothes oh. are like xenoestrogens All kinds of chemicals yes yeah. not residue good. on there yeah now we go to our weekly nut show us selection your, show us your nuts so I'm show, <laughs> show you, us your nuts Doug. I'm going to yeah. show you my raw <laughs> Brazil nuts <laughs> whoa yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. going exotic raw okay. Bra- yeah. Brazil I don't know nuts. if I've had those before just let me see those Brazil nuts sometimes on women in Brazil. Yeah. Ooh, those are big and brown. organic pumpkin seeds. Again, all Ooh. these are Thrive Market. I brand. want some of those right now. Pumpkin seeds are anti-parasitic. Did you know yes. that if Dude, you I eat, want some of those. I, I get down on these. There's a bit. compound in pumpkin seeds that paralyzes parasites. So if you eat them often, it'll paralyze a parasite. It'll unlatch itself from you your like intestines. Shit them out, and you'll poop them out. Wow. Yeah. And then another bag of dry pumpkin roasted are... organic salted cashews oh, because these tend the to disappear very quickly. Oh, those, Doug, those are, those are were the me. so the Thrive Market brands, which we're we're dipping into right now, because mm-hmm. these seeds are the pumpkin seeds are awesome. Are are these cheaper than the other brands? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh are. wow. Man. Well, there you go. Thank you, Doug. Now we can bring on the That's bird. Like a cornucopia of Thrive right there. Right. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. 
First question is from AlexAld99. Are the mobility sessions in performance meant to be somewhat tough, or am I just a big wimp? <laughs> LOL. I hate no, to break dude. it to you. Performance oh, man, is, the, it is. is the business. Hey, sweat. Some it, people sweat when they do these, like, and they irradiate and really tense up, you know, and get through these mobility movements. It's, it's just fun because it's like it's so different for a lot of people that it's it, it is challenging, man. It, mm -hmm. It's challenging to really go through the process and be diligent in it and like uh, you know really connect your body on that level. Like it's it it can be challenging for sure. Mo mobility sessions are workouts. Yeah, it's not like a so trigger sessions like in Maps Anabolic are meant to be very low intensity. Mobility sessions, although they're not high intensity, they're still workouts. So yeah, you're going to feel like you're doing something. Now the, the focus of them isn't building muscle or burning body fat, although they do contribute to, to that because they improve mobility. The focus of mobility sessions is to give you more control over your body in different ranges of motion. It's, and it's to complement the mass performance workouts. I think if you were to if you were to compare the maps programs in terms of like total intensity and workload, like maps aesthetic has a lot of volume, right. but maps performance, like especially phase four, mm -hmm. that's gonna kick your ass. Oh, like yeah. you're gonna get an ass beating. Well, four. I mean, performance is the most challenging for me because mm -hmm. it's it's uh, if there's anything I neglect the most. Like I love hypertrophy. I love strength type training. If I neglect anything, it's mobility work and multiplanar stuff, rotational stuff, which is all in it's inside like of green. uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, but I think it. I also think that most people probably listening to this podcast, unless you're somebody who's currently an athlete right now, but the average Jane or Joe that's 25 years or older and just working out in the gym and has a normal job, mm -hmm. green is probably one of the most beneficial programs that we have oh, as sure. far as what they all need to do. And the fact that it kicks your ass is kind of a reminder of like if I had to yeah, exactly. if I had to pick a maps program to live in for the rest of my life so I'm not allowed to ch change out of it it would be performance because it's so well rounded in terms of right you're going to build some muscle you're going to yep. build some strength you're going to have endurance you're going to have power you're going to have a lot you're going to get a lot from and it and the mobility yeah, aspect and the, of it and the, of course and the mobility and the mobility aspect of it and and mobility training or or paying attention to mobility will contribute tremendously to your aesthetic goals so mm -hmm. if your goal is just you know looking good you can get away with not doing mobility focused stuff for a little while but not for a long while at some point it'll become your limiting factor mm -hmm. so like uh we had dr jordan shallow on the show a while ago and he said that you know somebody will say like oh you know my, when i deadlift uh you know my back will kind of hurt uh, so I think it's because my hips are, are weak and I need strength in my hips. And he's like, no, the weak, the the limiting factor is the is your back. It's, you're injuring yourself because that's and that becomes your limiting factor. If you're able to strengthen these areas, that it's like the weakest uh, link in the chain. Yeah. If you're only strong in the ranges that you train. Mm -hmm. And so this helps to express that even further, it stretches it out. So you get stronger along that, that range. So that way now you have, you know, even more capacity for overall strength. So it contributes to the whole. So if you could treat your body as a whole and not just um, certain movements that, that you get skilled in. So if I'm like, I'm going just, you know, end range to end range and I'm not focusing on everything in between or, you know, twisting or different, uh, types of, um, you know, movements out of the joint, then you're not going to be strong in, in functional things that, uh, occur throughout your day. So mm -hmm. it's, I guess it's the most parallel to, um, you know, being strong just throughout your whole day and like activity wise bottom line it's the one that most people need it's the yeah. one that, i mean and we talk about this on i talk about this on the show all the time that we we tend to gravitate towards something that we enjoy we love we like to do whether it's that the means good stuff we're good at yeah, yeah. It's, it is and <clears throat> i think once you start to recognize it and you realize that then you you do your best to move out of those uh, out of those modalities and into ones that are going to benefit you the most and in my experience most people get crushed in maps green because it's such a different adaptation compared and compared yeah. to anything else that they've been doing and it's which means it's probably one of the best things that you could possibly do for your body it is think yep. about it this way i don't have to make the argument especially if you've been working out for a while i don't have to make the argument that barbell squats deadlifts overhead presses bench presses you know i don't have to make the argument that those are the most effective exercises for building those muscle are the strength. loudest signals everybody pretty much agrees you know there, there can be some debate and argument but for the most part most coaches and trainers 
will tell you, you know, unequivocally, those are the best exercises. Now imagine if you could do those exercises better. Right. So whatever your potential is, the potential is that you're squeezing out of a barbell squat. Uh, you can increase that potential by becoming more mobile mm -hmm. in the squat. So now that barbell squat, however effective it is for you, has only increased its effectiveness for you because you've now worked on your mobility. So we've had, when we first released MAPS Performance, that was the second program we released, if I'm not mistaken. We did MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance. So it was early on when Mind Pump was on the air. And one of the first, one of the, the cool things about it is that we, I used to get all these messages from people who, you know, we would convince people like, do MAPS Performance. Get in MAPS Performance, watch what happens. And I'd have people who'd be like, okay, I completed MAPS Performance. I went back to... MAPS Anabolic, or at that point we had MAPS Aesthetic afterwards, and they'd go to MAPS Aesthetic, and they're like, dude, I'm building muscle like I never have before because I can move better. I didn't realize how important yeah. you know, this kind of training is to even just building aesthetic muscle. Yeah. It's a huge, huge factor. And here's the other thing too. If you like the fun factor of exercises, then performance is it as well because you're going to be doing all these different movements that are not your traditional, you're doing your traditional movements too, but you're doing a lot of non-traditional movements. But mobility uh, is a huge focus in the program and it should be at least somewhat of a focus in your workout. You may not have to do, you know, hyper-mobility focus forever, but at least, at least if you're exercising consistently, you should have at least one day a week where all you do is focus on Movement and mobility. It's just getting strong in different directions, you know, on on like a real like generic kind of a statement. Like a, I I you know, and my brain. I've been I've been researching a lot with um, isometrics, and I've been researching a lot with the ways of getting you know this muscular radiation and what that even means and that whole process and really like what they're finding and what they found over the years. It's the more you can get your body to feel stabilized and under control and um, you can teach like your, your central nervous system is going to respond accordingly. So if we can get to that place where um, you can sort of quiet down that governing shutoff system where, you know, your body, it freaks out. It's like, I'm, you know, I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want you to get hurt in this direction. I don't want you to get hurt lifting this type of a weight. You know, that message is always going to be there, but we have to actually train the body to respond um, accordingly. And so to be able to kind of provide stability quicker, uh, you know, that's something that mobility is, is very good at. And so, you know, to, to now take that and carry that into a regular lift where now I can quickly get into a stabilized control, controlled environment. Now I can produce even more force. Right. So this force is is something new that you're going to be able to generate and then take with you. So mm, excellent. All right, guys. Before I go to the next question, I just wanted to ask you a question. Uh, ask us what a is it, Douglas? It's it's a question that somebody else or you question for you from you from me. Oh, okay. Yeah, What's or here, somebody else. Hold on, Do I got the answer. Yeah. Yes, nine inches. <laughs> did, I guess, did I guess right? Is that what you wanted to do? <laughs> no, that was not my That's exact small. question. No, my question is, do you have life insurance? Oh. I don't. You see, I, I don't think any of our listeners know that I'm actually a long-term life insurance agent. Yeah, actually, I actually have a policy, an old policy with Doug yeah, wow. for, for life sure. insurance. I did not know that. That's how Doug I do. Uh, Are you trying up. to get your hustle on right now? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to sell you now? guys. <laughs> no, no, the reason I bring this up is because there's no better way to create an instant estate than through life insurance. A lot of people are going through life unprotected, especially if you have small children. Yeah. If you have small children and you don't have a life insurance policy, you're making a very serious mistake. That's right, Justin. Yeah. No, I know. I've considered it. You're yeah. a bad father, dude. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot, of, a lot of people let's say- Let's backpedal here. A lot of people say, okay, well, I'm just going to make a lot of money or I'll save a lot of money, but hey, you know, you never know when the reaper may call. So what are you pitching to us right now? Let's, well, are so you trying to get me to get no, housing? The, the you're already making enough mind pump money trying well, to get Adam's more money from gonna, me? Uh, no, I'm doing, this for, all, I'm doing this for all of us because oh, okay. there's a company, it's called Health IQ. And I've heard of these guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they're a pretty big company and they're kind of competitors with me. But I thought, well, let's bring it out to the general mind pump audience, what they offer, because they're really focused on helping 
athletes get life insurance for less money. You know what's funny? Because is, they're because they're healthy. Is that why? Well, or? no. Because so so here's a funny thing. I've done life insurance in the past, and then I did one with Doug. Mm. And somebody comes out and they weigh you and they test do all these tests and stuff. And I'm I always have to like explain myself and go through this whole fucking process because yeah. for my height. I'm overweight. Yeah, your BMI is exactly. high. Yeah, I know that. That's always a problem. It's high. Me. So are these pe- so these people understand that they understand okay. this, and so this is one of the hurdles you may jump through with another company, especially if you're muscular. Mm-hmm. Is they're going to say, well, you know, you you're outside of that preferred rate class, and they'll charge you get more. muscular shamed. They'll charge yeah. and they'll charge you more. <laughs> they'll charge you more for mm-hmm. insurance. Oh, that's it could be substantially more, but not this company. Well, what they're going to do is you're going to go take a quiz. You're going to go through a little bit of a process and see what you qualify for. But they're going to take that into account. We should all take that quiz yeah. just to see. What's, Absolutely. Where is, do it we free, go? is it a free quiz? It is free. Oh, okay. How so do we you'd win? go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump. Oh, we got obviously Doug set something up. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, hey, you know, if I'm going to take, uh, if I'm gonna take uh, business so from my own pocket, I'm going to give it to everybody. Okay. okay? Right. How about that? Uh, but, you know. Side hustle over here we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> Doug. No, the, the truth is, you know, the fact well, that let's you're check it out. that type of thing. Let's check it out. I'm down to check it out. I'll take the quiz. We'll see. We'll put it out there on the forum, see if people like it. If it's something that, that maybe we'll talk to these guys so about. So healthiq.com forward slash mind pump, free quiz, and then they'll give you an estimate? Yeah, they'll give life you a insurance. quote. A quote. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Let's and do then it. They'll, and if you decide that you want to go through and do something with them, they're going to take you from start to finish to get the policy now, issued. Now, can we take out, can I buy a policy for someone else? Like, for example, can I buy a life insurance policy for Justin yeah. predicting that he may get- I'm some, so negligent. He may get right. some random Well, there's accident. something called insurable interest. You okay. have to have an insurable interest. So it's possible, okay. for example, us as a business, we could get life insurance on each other. Wow. Uh, like key man insurance, that type of thing. Oh, cool. Interesting. But Very cool. you just can't go to some random stranger and say, hey, you know what? Mm. <laughs> they may be hit by a bus, <laughs> wink, wink, uh, and I want to have a $10 million policy. Poison, it doesn't poison, work that way. Poison Adam's protein <laughs> shake? <laughs> yeah. Well, there little, goes my plan. <laughs> but I'm going to encourage everybody, if you do not have a policy, especially if you have kids, check these people out. Awesome. Because it's not that expensive. And it could be very valuable yeah. for your family, especially if something happens to you. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Next question is from Lewis KD. Can you guys talk about anabolic versus catabolic and how much being in a catabolic state affects trying to gain muscle and lose fat? Such buzzwords for advertisement. Yep. Yep. You know, such buzzwords to sell people on fucking either supplements or a program or even the, I mean, it's, we know that like that's anabolic and catabolic. You're either one of them. <laughs> they're two metabolic processes. Yeah. And they're both important. My muscles are getting they're, eaten. They're both important. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. They're both. Because very- we all are like, <laughs> everybody run away from, cat- you know, being catabolic. Right. No. Catabolic is required to break down. To burn fat. And break down molecules. Yes. For energy. If we're, if we're burning fat, we're catabolic. Bottom line. So your you, catabolic is important. So is anabolic, and you know anabolic. Everybody's chasing to be anabolic because that's what builds muscle. But when you're anabolic, you're also primed for building or l- building fat on your mm-hmm. body too. Mm-hmm. So there's both. There's a give and take. Both are good. Both are bad. Um, I think that I think there's too much uh, emphasis put on you know oh I'm trying to get it be anabolic or I'm trying to be catabolic. I think there or stay away from being catabolic. The or, other thing to consider is that you're not all one or all the other usually right most of the time you can actually they, they can happen at the same time mm-hmm. so i can although it's not as common i can definitely burn body fat which is a catabolic process of breaking down fatty acids into molecules that my body can use as energy and burn while being anabolic and building you know muscle and muscle tissue so they can happen at the same time. Both processes are very important. Can they technically happen at the exact same time, or are you looking at like in an overall window of like twenty four hours or forty eight hours? Mm, you can. know, uh, that's a good question. I'm not quite sure. I would say. So I would tell you. I would, from what I've read, it's it's you can't be technically. You cannot be. You're either or. Uh, at the at, at any single moment, but let's say you're like in a fasted state. Let's say I'm two days fasted, and I train. And I get a lifting a heavy session, so I send that that anabolic signal, but my body's not primed to be, to to build because it's not I haven't been fed. Moment I feed though, I'm now I can go from being catabolic right away to being anabolic. Well, so the way I would look at it is, let's say you're recovering, <laughs> which if you do everything right, that recovery adaptation phase is anabolic, right? So I've worked out, I've sent the signal, now my body is 
you know, ro- protein synthesis is increased, right. so muscles are building. But let's say I'm, st- I'm in a bit of a deficit with my calories. Some of the energy needed to will get prioritized to, will, over, to building the muscle may get taken from fat, right. my fat. So I may be catabolic in order to become <clears throat> anabolic. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying this, and we're splitting hairs, is because in the, in fitness, anabolic is everything. Everything's yeah. anabolic. Anabolic, anabolic. Catabolic is important. You know, I have look. I I, yeah. I catabolic just catabolic has been demonized like crazy. Yeah, that's right. Here's the so the energy for being anabolic. Uh, you require energy. You release energy with catabolic. The hormones associated with being anabolic are estrogen, testosterone, insulin, and growth hormone. Hormones uh, associated with catabol- uh, being catabolic: adrenaline, cortisol, glucagon, uh, glucagon, excuse me, and cytokines. Things that break energy down. They're both important processes, and exercises can also fall in either category. So uh, resistance training is known as an anabolic activity because it's promoting the building of muscle tissue. Cardiovascular activity can be categorized as catabolic, and these are general categories, because as I'm doing that cardio, I'm trying to just burn calories, and after I'm done, my body really isn't trying to build uh, muscle as a result. So as far as trying to gain muscle and lose body fat, they both work together. If you stay, if you push and always try and stay in one and not the other, you'll run into problems. If I'm always trying to build and store energy, I'm going to become obese. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna- well, that so that what I see most common is the guys that are chasing, especially like in bodybuilding world and circuits. It's everyone's trying to chase to be anabolic, and and so which their their thought process is consuming, consuming, consuming. You know, so keeping insulin high, getting, keeping that all. But what ends up happening is you just end up putting on body fat and then you end up getting to a point where you put on so much body fat, then testosterone starts to lower. And then it's like it's counterproductive to what you're trying to do. So this chasing the being anabolic or thinking that you need to be anabolic all the time in order to build muscle is is false. Also, mm-hmm. like you, you, if you're anabolic a couple times a week. You're, you can still put on plenty of muscle and still burn plenty of fat, and they're not going to be conflicting signals that you're sending to the body. Right, and what's funny is together. And what's funny is like you'll have uh, bodybuilders who will take catabolic uh, hormones getting ready for a show to try and get leaner. So they'll take like thyroid right hormone, and thyroid hormone is is a catabolic uh, hormone. It tells the body to burn you mean like clenbuterol or something. No, clenbuterol is not uh, is not thyroid. Clenbuterol. I thought it does a, affect your thyroid. Um, yes. not. Yes, it I does. know it's a beta agonist, but it doesn't. It's not thyroid hormone because you'll uh, have guys actually taking like T3, oh uh, okay, or T4 or, or Synthroid, got it, right? Got it. And those are catabolic, and you'll see people, especially natural bodybuilders, who are like, "Oh, bodybuilders take thyroid to get ready for a show, so I'm going to take thyroid," and then they lose muscle because it's so catabolic right. that they end up losing everything. Well, so that, that why I brought that up is that's what happened to me the first time I experienced clenbuterol. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. It, I because I never used it before, and I was leaning out. And I used it, and it was I was losing so fast. I couldn't consume enough. It was like, and weight was falling. Yeah, I leaned out, but a ton of muscle came off really? me too. Hmm. And I, what I really I noticed the decrease in strength really quick. Ephedra used to do that to me. And it's supposed you're not. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to kind of help you. It's they, supposed they, to be anti catabolic But when you're somebody who already has a really fast metabolism, so think of what happened. A deficit. And remember, I this was like the first time I'd really been in a deficit. My whole life, I was bulking, bulking, and then all of a sudden I decided to lean, and I was already leaning down just fine, and I decided. To throw clenbuterol on top of it and was just blown. gasoline. Oh, right. dude! You never just, took you never took uh, like T three. You never took Cytomel or I didn't fuck with T three. Um, uh, what else? Have, I messed with Winstrol. I did that. Yeah, those are all testosterone derivatives, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, here's the thing. I'll, I'll say this: you you definitely want. We've talked about this many times on the show. You definitely want to uh, make being anabolic part of your fat loss you know, journey and you definitely want to play with being catabolic when you're trying to gain muscle. So I'll explain why. If you build muscle, you'll burn more calories all the time. You'll have a faster metabolism. That's an easy one to sell nowadays. Now, why would you ever want to be a little catabolic when you're trying to gain muscle? Mainly because it actually uh, increases your body's uh, sensitivity to being anabolic. If I'm, if I fast, right, for, dude, do be catabolic for two days and turn around and fucking feed and watch what happens. Your, your body be re- feel more anabolic than you've ever felt. God, I mean, come on. Is there any other? Do you ever gain muscle faster than after a show, after coming off of hardcore catabolic dieting and stuff? You just gain muscle like a like a 
you know, mutant uh, after a show because your body's like it's like a sponge ready to suck. It reminds up. me of like our debating the the small meals myth, right? Like the thermogenic effect. It's like it's all relative, right? Uh-huh. So it's like yeah, you could have three days of over consuming calories trying to chase yourself and be anabolic for three days in a row straight or you could be catabolic for one of those days and then anabolic for the next day and that the spike how much more anabolic you're going to be that second day compared to the two days of you staying in this surplus all the time like it's it's probably a wash or you probably actually are doing better you're you're, you're basically hacking the system right so if you're trying to gain muscle and you want to be anabolic uh, most of the time or whatever that's your goal you should definitely be anabolic in terms of your diet and in, uh, in training most of the time, but not all the time. You don't want to be in this consistent every single day bulk, 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 bulk uh, mentality because you'll notice uh, diminishing returns. Your body will just start gaining body fat and you'll start gaining less muscle and all that stuff. Uh, so you want to throw in some days where you're being a little catabolic. And, and this, the opposite is true for people losing body fat. Bodybuilders have known this for a long time. They've, they've kind of taken advantage of it and called it cheat days and all that stuff with diet. But if you're trying to burn body fat, throwing in a day or two of calorie surplus, oh, it'll it'll work wonders on your metabolism. Yep. Next question is from Have Namey. Why are so many big box gym front desk staff visibly not fit? <laughs> <laughs> or is this just at Good Life Gyms in Canada? Oh, shit. <laughs> it doesn't make me want to join when the staff are not in good shape or even a bo- obese. I used to get into this with my, so operation, my operations manager and I used to fight about this all the time. And I told she would and, hire. Well, I used to. Sh- I used to. Sh- I was sh- definitely a thing. So I, I don't know how many o- uh, operations managers I've worked with in my probably somewhere around between fifteen and twenty in my entire career. And the, like I used to share the same story with all of them. That was. I remember being a 17-year-old boy, not making a lot of money. I was doing working part-time, going to school, and you know had to pay for my own gym membership. So affordability was important. Convenience was important. But so was the, the front desk girls being hot. I drove an extra 30 minutes across town to the front desk girls that were cute, that were checking me in, that were cute and fit. And that's a true story. So did my two buddies who joined memberships for me. We went out of our way for that. And that was the selling 17? factor. Yeah, Se- of course. Right. So, and what, well, I mean, when you look at the gym too, I mean, you're, they're full, it's full of 17 to 25 year olds and have, and now it's not to say that you can't, and what hurt their excuse back is this, it's so hard to find those girls that are organized and have it all, have it all. Right. And then also you're paying them minimum wage. Right. Yeah. So she's hot. She's smart and all and all that. She's probably not working for a minimum wage at the front desk. So it's kind of like this give or take relationship. But I used to get into this all the time with my own because those are the gatekeepers, in my opinion. That's your first. If you've yeah. never been in the first gym, introduction, your first introduction. Yeah. Like, hey, you don't know the difference between a sales counselor, a manager, a fitness manager, trainers, gym goers on there. You just see this person and at the front. It's not to say a personality can can't carry that but it has to be like somebody that's really you know like embrace like, like right you, you come in and you're like oh i love this person well you know you, I mean? you it's want, common though you, you want need that. you want it, they, you want them to kind of reflect fitness a little yeah. bit you don't got to be bodybuilders and well if you were building if it so here's the thing you we're you're ta- we're talking about a big company right this company that she's talking about the gym is called what good, good shape life. good shape or whatever good which life is probably like a you know, just it's like a, a 20, 20, yeah, it's a chain. So they probably got hundreds, possibly thousands of employees. So it's different than, you know, you opening your wellness f- facility. It's a, easier for you to manage. You're for sure going to make sure that girl or guy represents, you know, what your brand it's, is all about. It would be, it's, it's funny that people get offended yeah. by this, by the way, because it's really no different than going to a dentist's office and your dentist and the oral hygienist have terrible teeth. <laughs> it will definitely hurt your yeah, business because- sure. They're there to represent, you know, healthy teeth. Well, people working in gyms do reflect, right. you know, fitness. Now, that being said, some of my best staff ever were visibly uh, not fit. Now, there's a difference, though. These were people that I had pulled off of the workout floor mm-hmm. who were... We're beloved. They were already. actively involved in fitness and changing their life, and they had such a positive... Uh, you know, uh, connection to fitness, they may have already lost 50 pounds. Yeah. And they're, and those people were some of my best employees because they weren't working at my gym to get paid minimum wage to work my front desk. They were working at my gym because fitness was changing their life. 
Mm-hmm. They loved it. They wanted to work there so they could become a part of it, mm-hmm. and they continued to make it a part of life. Well, and those that, people sold that's my I gym. See it working. That's oh, another yeah. way. You, that's another reason why you got to be careful too, because you never know the 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 yeah, they over might have lost a ton. Of right, weight. the overweight girl at the front desk who's scanning you in right now. Yeah. For all you know, she's down fifty pounds and she's been changing her life. You know yeah. what I'm saying for the last two years or whatever. So you don't ever want to make that but assumption. You can always see based off. But habits I get it and what because they're eating and you know like it's a lot. Yeah. It's a, I remember it used to drive me crazy because then you they go for lunch break you smell McDonald's oh, through the gym that's what I yeah in the break room I'm like what are you fucking doing you yeah, cannot you can't walk McDonald's monster. into my gym no. and like people smell that that's ridiculous dude I took yeah that's not one time work. and I don't get look I don't care you're gonna go eat what you're gonna eat especially if you're a dude trying to gain muscle like I would you know I'd sometimes eat this food but better believe I didn't bring that in my gym because right. I knew how it looked I remember one time I had a sales guy who I told him I'm like listen I don't care if you're going to eat McDonald's, I don't care if you're going to eat that kind of stuff. Obviously, he doesn't represent fitness and health, but whatever. What was his name? Mike. I'm not going to say his last name. But he was, we called him Planet because he was on this constant bulk. So he would drink weight gainers while eating burgers. And <laughs> oh my God. he was definitely a big dude, but he was also obese. So he was like this big dude with a big belly. His face and neck were always red because he was on tons of anabolic steroids. So he'd eat like ridiculous fast food to try and get calories in definitely shouldn't have been on bulk it should have stopped five years ago but he's still doing it and i used to tell him listen man i don't care if you eat this food i know what you're trying to do i get it just don't bring it in the gym and don't throw your wrappers and shit in your garbage that's right next to the to your desk where you're going to take guests and sit down and try and sell them a membership because you look like a big ass hypocrite so one day I was fed up, like he kept doing this, and I walked by, and sure enough, not only does he have a big Coke sitting on his desk, but he's also in his garbage is Jack in the Box, you know, bags and shit. This was at Santa Teresa. Mm. So I took his garbage and I dumped it all over his desk. <laughs> and I, I paged him on the intercom, and I, I, I called him Planet on the I was a dick. And I, you know, Planet, get over here to your desk and clean this Jack in the Box. I said it over the whole intercom. And he took it off, and he was a good sport about it. And I'm like, listen, dude, if I ever see that in here again, I'm going to throw it on your desk. And I said, and next time I'll throw it on your desk when you have a guest. So you're going to lose that guest. So he, he never did that again because it was so frustrated, so angry. When I first became a fitness manager, I actually took, uh, kicked one of the trainers out of the gym and told him to take the rest of the day off because this you'll love this. He was eating Doritos while he was training his client. Yes. Get out of here, dude. <laughs> what the hell? Halfway through I've his- I've se- launched trainers for so much less, dude. Bro. Uh, a Starbucks coffee would light, me, oh, light you up. Halfway through his session. <laughs> Caramel frappuccino. He's yeah. training his client. The client's doing lunges. He's <laughs> crunching on his thing. And I, I tapped on his shoulder. I'm like, hey, come here real quick. And he comes over and I'm like, get the fuck out. He's like, what? I'm like, don't come back. Don't come, come back tomorrow and don't ever eat chips in front of your clients again. What about my client? I'll finish the session. And I walked over and I'm like, he had a family emergency. And I finished the session. So, but yeah, you want to reflect, uh, you want to reflect fitness, but really more than reflecting the physical representation, representation of fitness, although that's also important and people who buy in typically will look fit. You also want people to kind of live it a little bit, you know, who understand fitness because there's nothing worse than having someone work in your gym who isn't all about, you know, the fitness not lifestyle. On team fitness. Yeah, and it's just like they're not going to do you any favors yeah. in your gym. They're not going to create a good atmosphere in your facility. And this goes for everybody. It is a reflection at the end of the day. Who would consider Who that. would you say of of your staff was the most fit and the least fit people in the gym categories? What do you mean? Like oh, so the like, whole staff? Yeah, so like trainers the most fit, right? If yeah. you took your all your staff, the right. trainers are probably the most fit. Second would probably be what sales sales, sales maybe, people yeah operations is always last operations yeah. for last huh mm-hmm. the kids club oh yeah was yeah. always yeah, and kids the, club front desk and then maintenance and then maintenance was always we had a divisional president who was a reflection of obesity when we worked over there oh yeah no and i'm not going to say his name but people who are listening know exactly what i'm talking about we have quite a, we had quite a few i'd be honest yeah, with you yeah there was a lot at of that. the at the regional level that used to make me so upset yeah. I, know. I remember getting so mad that i would see this and it wasn't like you're just a little overweight like he was right he and, was and obese cuz i'm not talking like that that's not i and i think there's there's total room for that i mean uh, right now i'm nowhere near what I, the shape i was in two but years ago but you're not obese right i'm in shape still you know say still work out still yeah. make healthy choices like i'm not in my top shape it's yeah. like 
that you you could easily manage your life, in my opinion, and still yeah. ma- maintain like a healthy form and still have. I mean, we've been drinking, traveling, eating, and stuff like that. You could still manage that. I think what it is is people spiral out of control, dude. Yeah. I don't care if you've put on 20, 30 plus pounds. It's not because you made a couple bad choices. No, no, you no, no, spiral. No. Put a f- lot of effort in that direction, right? You spiral the fuck out of control, and you don't realize lots it. of them know? Twinkies, or you do down. realize it, and you know you get. Dude, fuck- I used to get so mad because I'm the kind of person that if I'll buy into something if I think you're being honest. But if I think you're bullshitting, you could you could say anything and I won't buy into it because I can't stand the lack of integrity. And I remember sitting in these these huge meetings or whatever, and you'd have these these people high up in the company who are clearly obese talking about we're changing lives. We need to change more lives. And I remember thinking, like, you fucking bullshitter. Right, you're not yeah. cha- you're, you change your life first. Right. Cause I, I'm not buying into this. Right. It used right. to get me so mad. Yeah. Next question is from Emmeline Kaus. Justin, what Star Wars <laughs> character are the Mind Pump crew most like? Oh, God. Dude, you got to do everybody, dude. This is so good. You I got, actually had to write it down. So I oh, did remember. you actually? Oh, you I, did I put not. some thought into oh, this. Oh, God, let's bit. hear this. Just a little bit because, I mean, we, we had talked about this and I was dying laughing. Uh, okay, so you got to tell us who, who we are and then why. Yeah, okay. why that character? Sal's definitely C-3PO. I've oh, my it. God. <laughs> like, I've narrowed it down to C-3PO because, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't go, you know, any character, I'm like, ah, uh, you know, I was kind of going back and forth with a few you know because you got you're a cool dude you know don't go don't, don't kid yourself at the same time you're just like this fucking robot of facts <laughs> you know what I mean? you gotta you gotta walk like him yeah, sometimes yeah yeah <laughs> and i mean c3po is hilarious like yeah. like sometimes he's got he lots just, of dad jokes yeah he's got dad jokes he's doing stuff he's like <laughs> he just finds himself in situations like oh oh and then you know <laughs> laser beams are like flying over his head so that's Sal. <laughs> I thought um, I thought you used to say that I was uh, who's the the Carissian? Oh, Lando. Lando. No, I, so so I think Adam's more Lando. Adam's you know, Lando. So, yeah, Adam's very much more Lando. So he's got the charisma and the smoothness and like he's like you know uh, uh, like Han Solo was a little worried he was going to steal his girl. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so everyone's like, worried about me stealing. Their you know what I mean? Like so Adam comes in, he's all smooth. He, he like did his own uh, you know empire up there in the clouds. <laughs> and uh, he he got himself like a go to guy, which which is Doug is the uh, Lobot, which is uh, what's that? So Lobot was that like human character that was actually a robot. Oh, so had, oh I remember the bald headed guy. The, yeah, yes, I remember. Yeah, I remember him. And so he was like he was he organized everything. Oh, that's like, Doug so, for and then, sure. And then he went around and, and was trying to like he overthrew like the stormtroopers as they were like trying to like capture. Everybody. I remember. Yeah. So that, I was like, oh yeah. So Doug's like the guy. He's like the enforcer. Oh, there he is. But he's like, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. He just, he just, he's like your your go to guy on command. Like he's just gonna get right. shit done. He's a machine. Man. He's a machine. Yeah, okay. yeah. He's a machine. That's Doug. Doug's so, a machine. So and then I I went even further and I was like, I'm gonna include Taylor and Drew. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like so. <laughs> who's, who's Taylor? Dude, Taylor. I had a hard time with this one because like you know he's an interesting guy. He's like super mysterious. Who's that one guy? He doesn't yeah. want to be shown a lot. What are we we're changing his T dog name to mis- uh, slow mo slow mo mysterio. 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 <laughs> right. I thought I thought he would be uh, what's his name? No, hold on. Jar- me me yeah. so hot. Yeah, no, that? no, no. I'm not gonna throw him on blast like that. Okay. He's not, he's not Jar Jar. There you go. No, no, no. Who he, is he? Who do you? He's make? more like Kylo Ren. Oh. So if you think of it, he's like. Ugh. I don't know. He's got these sort of characteristics you're just not sure of, but he's like really passionate. <laughs> the know? long hair, yeah, I can, yeah. He's got the long hair. He's just he's I kind guess, of mysterious. Actually, if you shaved, his you don't know off. his backstory yet. You know, a little like, emo. Like, yeah, he's emo. He like I could see him. <laughs> I could see him just raging like that. Like, no, and just, <laughs> like you know, having a temper tantrum. I feel like Kylo's very millennial esque. Yeah, too. he's like millennial. He embodies the millennial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but I, not to say like obviously like and I had to I had to do somebody. You right. know, like so that yeah. was my best you know guess for Taylor. And then Drew, Drew to me is R two D two. Oh yeah. Okay, and and reason you being, can't help but love him. He's fucking. You love him, right? And he does like awesome stuff, and he's he's part of like like saving them in tight pinches and stuff. <laughs> but then he just fucking takes off. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So like Luke, right? He's like, where the fuck did R two D two go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then his uncle's like, go get him. We just bought him. You this know? is true for and sure. Drew just took off. He just takes off. Oh, and, that's so and then you true. go find him, where and then you're Drew like, Jay? oh 
oh man, R two D two, and you like hug him, and he's like, oh, it's a beep boop boop beep boop boop boop. Yeah. You know, let's let's go to fucking, you know, another, and he just like, takes off again. You don't <laughs> see him, and he shuts down. Damn it, like, he shut down like in the new movies. You, Those are really you know good. nothing about him yet. Yeah. Those are so, really good. That's, that's my good. best bet. You didn't get Katrina in there. I didn't get Katrina in there. Yeah. Um, let's see. She's Prince Princess Leia esque. She's Princess Leia esque. Um, I no, you know, I think she's more Queen Amidala. Like she's very like uh, like. Uh, what's the word? Um, Which one's that? Not like royal, but like has like a, a an authoritative like. Um, Which one was that? Who's Queen? Who's so that? she's the one that was. I mean, Dude, that's she, fucking what's her name? She, Natalie Portman. Yeah, she ruled right. So she was organized, and she like she, she like had everything all figured uh, out. And, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But she's also a badass, you know. So I don't know. That's what I think. I think Princess Leia was like. She was more of like. Um, yeah, she just would. I don't know. Now let me guess, Justin's what Han Solo, dude. If I had to narrow it down, <laughs> and, and I, mean, I went through the list, right? I was like thinking, I'm like, uh, yeah, dude. Because who else? Like, I I was trying to think of like some. I mean, I would probably be Jar Jar. You know what I mean? Like, no. Ah! Don't try and throw yeah. that in there. No. You know yeah. you think you're Han. No, I'm Han. definitely Han. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely Han. <laughs> you're definitely I'll throw cool. some sarcasm in there and like fuck with people, and then I'm out. You know, yeah. I no, I think I'd have to say those are pretty accurate, man. I like yeah. that. Yeah, C three PO. Yeah, I should have thought of the you know Katrina. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to come back to that one. That's excellent. Yeah. All right, check it out. YouTube. Um, we actually post Qua episodes on YouTube now. Different. They're different ones. So if you go to YouTube, we'll answer like one or two questions. So it's like a fi- like a fifteen minute episode. And some of the recent ones were like, should you use a Smith machine? We had one where we actually targeted some muscle tech supplements. Um, We've had a few other ones. So you go on there, you can look up the quaz, and it's me, Adam, and Justin answering questions on uh, Mind Pump TV on YouTube. And of course, we post other videos as well. So make sure you go and subscribe. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.